Hello, this is Alex from Cloud.RF here with a demo of mapping a mobile ad hoc network using the Cloud.RF API. So a MANA network is essentially a network without infrastructure. It's quite challenging because unlike a cellular network, you don't have 20 meter tall metal base stations giving you great coverage from every hill. A MANA network is used by emergency services and defense, also known as a mesh network. And the topology of a MANA network is fascinating. It varies depending on the ter terrain and the obstacles. So what we've set up here for this demo is a 16 kilometer track across a variety of different terrain. We've got um, open ground here in the fields. We've got suburbs. Uh, we've got a giant hill blocking everything and we've got another uh, giant hill with a plateau on the top here. And as you can see, these nodes are moving. So the API is receiving requests every second uh, to model all these points. Now there are 30 points, so 30 nodes. Each node needs to be tested against all the other nodes except itself. So 30 multiplied by 29 is 870 links. And we're modeling 870 links every second and putting it onto uh, Google Earth as a, a KML in this case. Now where that points data com comes from is, is your business. So that is uh, data that could be held in a database. It might be GPS locations, it might be uh, vehicle tracks, uh, whatever. It's just coordinates and it gets put into the API. At the API, we're then using a template for the, uh, the hardware that we're using. So you could have different hardware for each node. In this case, just to keep things simple, we're using the same uh, template for all the nodes. And at the moment, we're on uh, L-band with uh, one watt of power and some fairly generic settings. And just to show you what happens if um, we switch to a different uh, profile, I'm going to switch the frequency up now to uh, 2.5 gigahertz at the database and you'll see a change in the network topology. So straight away, um, a lot of the green links uh, turned orange or disappeared. And it's probably a good time to explain the color coding. Uh, we have a concept of free colors, so a traffic light schema for this visualization. So you're not having to worry about uh, precise values like you would do if you were using uh, planning software to plan a cellular network, for example. And if I was to expand one of these nodes on the left here and see some uh, values, I can see different color values um, with different dB levels as signal to noise ratio. We're, we've set some arbitrary thresholds and a noise floor and the thresholds are uh, 5 dB for red, uh, 10 for amber and 20 for a good signal for green. And as you can see here, up here on the plateau, uh, where we've got nice line of sight between nodes, yes, we're getting nice strong green links. However, down here in the, uh, in the suburbs, uh, we're struggling. So we're, we're obstructed, uh, we're getting links occasionally, uh, a lot of the time we're just not getting links. Or if we are getting a link, it's not very good. Now this open ground is interesting because this is uh, Occasionally, you're getting a direct link between one of the nodes which is up on the hill here and a node which is much, much further away. And this is uh, due to line of sight, because if I zoom down here, just near the golf course, and we have a look up the hill, you can see from their point of view here, and you can get lovely uh, line of sight shots to nodes which are up on the hill. So that's great for these guys up here on the hill. However, the thing about Mane networks is as they're all ground-based and they're close to the ground, they're very sensitive to obstructions. And so what you can see here is there's a lot of redundant nodes in this network. These nodes up on the hill, they're not really adding much value to the network compared with down here in the suburbs where we would really benefit from having some additional nodes. In fact, we would really benefit from having a node on the side of that hill there to act as a repeater. So this type of API use is completely different to radio planning in the traditional sense. We're not planning for networks tomorrow, we're visualizing a live network today. And from that, we're learning uh, 
different things about our network. We're learning where the gaps are. Uh, we also can exercise uh, different profiles. So we could put on a profile now, uh, just to demonstrate, I'm going to put on a profile of uh, 500 megahertz and you'll see a huge difference uh, because that's a longer wavelength. He's not attenuated as much and he can cope much better with obstacles. So now we've got a much, a much stronger network uh, going on, but we don't have nearly as much bandwidth down at 500 megs as we would up at uh, 2.4 gig or 5.8 gig, uh, for example. Now this, uh, this capability is not live yet um, on CloudRF. It exists as an API only, so you can pull on it now with uh, your own scripts and your own data, but you would have to make a client. Uh, we're in the process of developing a, a public client for this to, to make that process easier. Uh, but the points API, which is what powers this, um, is live and you can go ahead and integrate with that now.